today I have a viewer request uh, from Fazfu one day ago and to paraphrase it's how to deal with a friend who acts a certain way in order to fit in. So suppose you have a friend A you've known for a very long time, right? And uh, you know his family situation, you know um, all the things that he has in his house or whatever. And then uh, you go meet a group of people with friend A. And then friend A suddenly starts saying things like, Oh yeah, I'm super rich, when you know he's not. Or like, Oh yeah, I have a PlayStation 5, and you know, I have the prototype of a PlayStation 6 at home. And I have like five guitars at home. And you're thinking like, why, why is this guy lying, right? And so these types of things, well, why, why does this person who isn't like this, uh, why are they ask, acting as if they need this attention, right? And um, these tend to be kind of very, you know, uh, triggering moments for our viewer here. So how do we navigate this situation? So the first thing to keep in mind for these types of situation is that number one, everything happens for a reason. Okay, so we, person A and me, we both meet this group of people at the same time. But given that we are having the same experience, our behavior in this new experience is different. Why? because our lives leading up to this moment have been different, right? And so because I am used to these types of, um, you know, re 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 acting a certain way, chances are, if I'm a people pleaser, right? I want other people to not be upset with me more than anything. Then what am I going to do when I meet a new group of people? I'm gonna stay quiet first and I'm gonna give pleasantries and I need to assess the situation first. Why? Because if I'm a people pleaser, I need to find out who's the alpha dog here. I need to find out who has the capacity to kind of um, be in control of my mood. And so I'm gonna keep quiet and then I'm just gonna look around a little bit uh, to assess the situation. But suppose I'm not a people pleaser. Suppose um, I have lots of siblings and uh, in order to get my needs fulfilled, I always needed to do things to get their attention, get my parents' attention or any adult's attention. Suppose I have a really prominent older sibling who always kind of sets you as like a backlight. Oh, your ex and ex is little brother or oh, your ex and Y and Y is a little sister, right? And so you want your identity too, right? You want to be your own person. So what do you do? You tend to sort of be more extroverted and act out and things like that. So. In the same situation, you might be uh, doing things like, uh, you know, really kind of making a pronounced um, motion about your existence and things like that. So depending on how your life has built up to this point, you will act a certain way. And that's completely fine, right? So people in general act for a certain way. And that reason usually has to do with the past. Okay, now taking a little bit of a different direction. I want to talk about this. So there's like a bad way and then there's like a good way to live, right? Okay. So I am, suppose I'm here. Now I'm not punching babies. So if I'm not punching babies, does that make me a good person? It makes me kind of a adequate person. Okay. But suppose I am punching babies then I'm actively in this bad zone, right? Okay, and now suppose I go out of my way to save babies who have terminal illnesses and I donate to their cause a lot, or um, I donate to a lot of families who can't uh, financially afford to keep their children alive. Then I'm being a good person, right? Okay, good. So this is the spectrum of kind of the human behavior. There are things that actively make you fit in the bad depending on the so societal norms. And there are things that generally make you good. And these things, needless to say, require a little bit more extra effort than not doing anything, right? Okay. Why this is important is this person who is trying to be the star of the show, right? Are they doing anything like 
bad. So of course we all know that lying is bad, right? But how can you be sure that what this person is intending to do is what this person is doing is malice? Right? So are they lying with malice or are they lying to fulfill some kind of an inner need that, that they have? Are they lying? Are they saying things in order to resolve a safety issue that they have inside? So these things, you don't have full awareness around why a person is acting this way. So if the person is doing something bad, right? Suppose they're actively punching babies, then you gotta, it, it, not you have to, but then it would be good for you to step in so that this person stops punching babies, right? But if it's not fitting in that category, then what we have to do is we have to let people be. Because why? People have free will. As long as they are not engaging in activities that are actively harmful and detrimental to society, we can't really do anything about it because there's nothing stopping other there's nothing stopping you from doing those things. So then we have to ask the question, well, I think it's bad, right? Okay, so what is bad? Uh, Buddhism has like five degrees of bad, and it's like um, actively physically harming people, uh, killing people, needless to say, and uh, getting like wasted, uh, like basically too intoxicated, and then lying, as in uh not like fabricating the truth for like small things but like actively scamming people by promising them some things and then not fulfilling them or saying uh curse words and making other people feel bad with your words so basically uh lying is is a, cat a subcategory of uh using malicious words And the last category is uh, sexual harassment. I don't want to be physically touched, but you know. And uh, this also is in the same category, physically harming and killing. And the other one is, uh, sorry, I miscounted the last one, is uh, stealing property. Okay, so uh, Christianity and um, you know Islam has their own versions of what is good and bad. But in general, you can all see that these things are, in general, across cultures, bad. But if they're not doing any of these things, right? So I'm lying for my self-image. That's different from me using my words to manipulate other people into, like, um, you know, buying some cryptocurrency from me, right? If it gets to that stage, you can stop. But you can sort of tell when people um, have that kind of malice or not, right? Or you learn by experience. Like me, I've been scammed once. But going back to the topic at hand, okay. So if you are finding that you are activated, and by activated, I kind of mean triggered by other people, right? Then you might benefit from thinking about why these things get to you in particular. And I think you were doing a good job of that in the self-reflection. But the bigger goal beyond that self-contemplation is this. I want you to be happy, right? And I want you to be in charge of your own happiness. I want you to define happiness in your terms, and I want you to decide when to be happy, when not to be happy, if you want to decide not to feel happy. But here's the thing. Right now, you're here, and you're in a good mood. And then this person is about to enter your zone of consciousness. When they cross over, you suddenly feel bad. When they leave, you feel good. So depending on them, 
You feel bad or you feel good. So who's in charge of your happiness right now? You or this person? It's that person, right? But chances are, this is only one strand of that frustration that you might feel. And the more of these frustrations that you have, the less your life is lived in your own terms. And these frustrations have a lot to do with strong sense of morality and the strong sense of how the world should be. And that's why the word should is such a big keyword in life coaching. Because should indicates a rigidity in thoughts, shame, um, and like hierarchical thoughts. There's so many, like should is like a total complete package of um, behaviors that we can discuss a lot in life coaching. So, in your contemplation of happiness, I want you to be in charge. Because why? Nobody can guarantee that the people that you don't like, the type of people that you don't like, will never enter your life. That means your happiness becomes dependent on luck. I'm happy as long as I don't have these kinds of crazy people in my life. I'm happy as long as I have this amount of money. I'm happy as long as I have this kind of skill. I know you're an excellent guitar player. And the more your happiness depends on certain things, the more desperate you become at the possibility of potentially losing that. And that warps your behaviors and that warps your perspective. And now, pers uh, not happiness, but the pursuit of happiness becomes the primary driver of your life in the kind of the very dependent way. What I mean is your pursuit of happiness becomes unhappy. And I'm here to tell you to advocate for the opposite. Your pursuit of happiness can be done from a happy place. So that later on, through a lot of contemplation and meditation, you find that there is nothing to pursue, which is a great feeling. See you in the next video.